Welcome in to Outkick the Show, boys and girls. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. Outkick the Show is presented by Odd Shark. Go to Odd Shark for all your gambling and informational related needs. Also, if you need a mortgage, go to thehomeloanexpert.com. Whether you need to get refied, whether you need to get pre-qualified, whatever you need, make sure that you go to my friends at thehomeloanexpert.com. Basically, if you have a mortgage rate outside of the twos, you need to go to thehomeloanexpert.com. It's Outkick after dark. Outkick up all night, as my good friend Rhonda Shear used to say. I want to thank everybody at the Birmingham Quarterback Club. I have been out and about all day, 65 shut down with a major accident uh, in Birmingham, also shut down south of town in Nashville. Total disaster of a trip back, but you know who had a bigger disaster than me today? M-S-E-S-P-N. This is one of the most ridiculous stories we have ever seen. And of course, I react gleefully and love everything about it. This morning, on my way to Birmingham to go speak in Birmingham, I see that Jamel Hill has tweeted, one of you sent me her tweet, uh, this play always works. Change happens when advertisers are impacted. If you feel strongly about Jerry Jones' statement, boycott his advertisers. And then she also retweeted his advertisers, AT&T, Bank of America, Dr. Pepper, Snapple, and Ford. Of course, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. I don't know whether Jamel Hill is so stupid that she doesn't understand how her salary is paid or if she's intentionally trying to get fired. It's got to be only one of two things, okay? If you are in the business that we are in, your salary is either paid by advertisers or the NFL, right? Especially at ESPN. So I honestly don't know whether she is so dumb that she didn't think about the fact that her entire show is underwritten by these same sponsors or that the NFL is effectively the only reason why ESPN continues to exist or she's intentionally trying to get fired. I only see it as one of two things because reports were that Bob Iger, who said that her feelings were hurt so he wasn't going to fire her, did so after she was tearful after she was remorseful, after she begged for forgiveness for the stupidity of calling Donald Trump a white supremacist, calling all of his supporters white supremacists, and also saying that Donald Trump entirely surrounded himself with white supremacists and that he had only been elected president because he was white. She tearfully begs for forgiveness, apologizes for all that she has done to hurt the the ESPN brand, and then what does she do? She tweets that... Everybody should boycott the Dallas Cowboys, their advertisers, and the NFL if they're upset with Jerry Jones saying players need to stand for the National Anthem. That's where we are as a country now, where the National Anthem has become the most controversial song in America because of a bunch of left-wing idiots. Now, on top of that, Al Sharpton has since tweeted, God bless him, proving that this is going to be such uh, such an amazing story. ESPN suspension of Jamel Hill is an outrage. Al Sharpton always outraged is an outrage and should not all caps go unanswered. ESPN and advertisers will hear from us. So I want you to follow me down the rabbit hole here. Follow me down the rabbit hole of absurdity. We have a player protest that Colin Kaepernick started last year. That player protest is pure stupidity. As I have been telling you for a long time, Colin Kaepernick protested the fact that Barack Obama and Loretta Lynch were already investigating player shootings, right? Sorry, not player shootings, police shootings. And as a result of that, okay, are you following this? He demanded that Barack Obama and Loretta Lynch investigate shootings and actually end up doing what they're already doing. Whether Barack Obama just didn't want to throw uh, Colin Kaepernick under the bus or what, I don't know. But rather than say, hey, Colin Kaepernick, great to draw attention to what we're already doing here, I don't know. But effectively, the analogy that I've been using is Colin Kaepernick showed up at a McDonald's, 
at 11.30 and demanded breakfast and took a knee. And then, as a result of that protest, the manager at McDonald's walked out and said, Hey guys, just so you know, we already offer breakfast all day long. So Colin Kaepernick is sitting around protesting something that is already happening, demanding that something that's already happened, happen. It's the dumbest protest in the history of sports. He's demanding, demanding a protest for something that is already happening. I don't know whether Barack Obama and Loretta Lynch felt bad because Colin Kaepernick is so dumb that they didn't want to tell him that what he's protesting for, they're already doing. So we have this initial protest, all right? The initial protest happens. Then Jerry Jones responds to the protest. Now, I don't know why this surprises people, but if you exercise your First Amendment rights, it's not a one-way street. Everybody else also has the opportunity to respond to your exercised First Amendment rights. And so, Jerry Jones has the right to say, hey, I think you should stand for the National Anthem. And if you don't stand for the National Anthem, as your employer, I believe there should be consequences. Now, let me go back on my analogy that I was using this morning that I've been using for a while. You have these guys protesting in uniform while at work. Tell me anybody else in America who can show up at work in their uniform and protest while they are in their uniform at work. Could you do that at UPS? Could you do that at FedEx? Could you do that at Goldman Sachs? Could you do that at McDonald's? Could you do that at anywhere where you are wearing a uniform? Everyone would think it was absurd if a guy delivered a UPS or FedEx package to you while wearing a Make America Great hat with a Make America Great bumper sticker on his UPS or FedEx vehicle, every single person listening right now to this show or watching it would say that person, if they continued to do that, would deserve to be fired. If, when you went down the aisle at Walmart to buy your Diet Dr. Pepper and your cutlets, Let's say whatever you want, your Diet Dr. Pepper, your cutlets, your tennis balls, whatever you could possibly want, right? Everything you can buy at Diet Dr. Pepper at Walmart. And when they rang up your Diet Dr. Pepper, they said to you, you know what? Abortion is murder. Do you think that you would get to keep your job at Walmart for very long? The answer is no, you would not. So why do we believe that these guys protesting in their uniform at work deserve rights that nobody else gets? Now a lot of people out there want to say, oh, what about Muhammad Ali? What about 1968 at the Olympics? Muhammad Ali was an independent contractor. If you are an independent contractor, you are not an employee of anyone else. Therefore, you can actually have any opinion that you want. Just like the reason why Floyd Mayweather is allowed to continue boxing, despite the fact that he has all these domestic violence incidents, is because he controls his own business. He is an independent contractor. The money Mayweather Productions, or whatever the heck it is, actually exists, all right? And that's how he makes his money. This is an unbelievable story, okay? So Jerry Jones pushes back and says, you know what, it's bad for business when players don't stand for the National Anthem. There will be consequences if they don't stand for the National Anthem here. Jamel Hill then decides that there needs to be a boycott of a protest, protest response. She demands, think about the levels of rabbit hole protest right here. The initial protest is Colin Kaepernick. We then have Jerry Jones responding to the protest. You can even make it more complicated and say we have Colin Kaepernick. And then we have Donald Trump respond. And then we have the players respond to that. And then we have Donald, then we have Jerry Jones respond to that. And now we're all the way down to Jamel Hill responding to the protest of the protest of the protest of the protest. And she says, boycott the advertisers, which interestingly is the same thing that Donald Trump has said on some level, which means we have a simultaneous boycott going on, which means that the advertisers have no idea whether they are being boycotted by the left wing 
or the right wing. And now Al Sharpton is going to protest the protest of the protest of the protest of the protest and actually make ESPN squeal. This is an unbelievable rabbit hole of absurdity. What it proves is you can't ever win with the left wing. They will always grab you by the balls and whine. They are not going to ever be satisfied. As a result, as a result, we are sitting here looking at a full-on cataclysm for ESPN, which began when ESPN decided that they needed to get involved in the political universe to begin with. Here, I don't have any sympathy for Jamel Hill. If you tweet about the number two, one and two most important aspects of your business, fuck the NFL effectively, and fuck the same advertisers that broadcast and support the shows that we broadcast, what other options does ESPN have? How, again, I come back to this question. Either Jamel Hill is trying to get fired or she's so stupid she doesn't understand where her salary comes from. Those are the only two options that I can see here. What did she think was going to happen when she was on notice for saying the president was a white supremacist and then she decided that she was going to go out and go after advertisers who support her own show and the NFL, which is the biggest broadcast partner of her entire company? I mean... It's a different level of dumb. The only thing I can think of is that she wants to get fired and go do something else. Otherwise, it makes no sense. And now, everybody's going to turn this into a massive mess for ESPN. They did, I think, what they had to do. They should have suspended her over the Donald Trump comments because at least those were political. This is even easier to defend, but it's worse for her company. At least you could argue the Donald Trump comments had nothing to do whatsoever with ESPN. Here she's going directly after the Dallas Cowboys. She's going directly after the NFL. And she's going directly after the same advertisers that sponsor her television show and many of the shows that air on ESPN. What did she actually think was going to happen here? Again, there are only two options. Either she's trying to get fired or she's so stupid she doesn't understand how she actually gets paid I don't know which it is, honestly. Because I think it's probably the latter because there are so many people in, in sports media who have no idea how they actually get paid and they don't understand that their salary is predicated off of this situation. I just, I don't understand. It. It's, it's delusional to even make the decision to do this. Again, the tweet that she sent is so dumb. It makes no sense. It is utterly indefensible and I tweeted it out this morning the minute that I saw it and several of you pointed it out too AT&T is one of the companies she's calling to boycott don't they carry watch ESPN? of course they do as I said this morning 10 hours ago the stupidity is amazing all the advertisers she wants fans to boycott and I put this in all caps advertise on her show and network who calls for a boycott of their own advertisers? what in the world was she thinking? ESPN's, I also tweeted, entire future as a business is tied to the NFL. If they don't get Monday Night Football and the ability to cover the NFL, ESPN has no basis as a company anymore. And again, this is what Jamel Hill tweeted. If you're just joining us right now, my name is Clay Travis. It's Outkick the Show, presented by Odd Shark and the Home Loan Expert. This play always works. Change happens. This is Jamel Hill tweeting this morning. Change happens when advertisers are impacted. If you feel strongly about Jerry Jones' statement, boycott his advertisers and then she retweets a guy. Here are a few of them. AT&T, Bank of America, Dr. Pepper, Snapple, and Ford. All of the ESPN executives looking at this had to just throw their hands up in the air and say, what is she doing here? This is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. She is directly attacking the foundation of our business. And they gave her a previous pass because they this is a direct attack on the very business of ESPN. You're going after the advertisers that allow the network to exist as well as the NFL which is the number one content provider that allows the network to exist. She's going after her own advertisers 
saying to boycott them. I don't understand how her brain could make this connection. I don't understand how a reasonably intelligent person makes this decision which is why on some level I think that she's trying to get fired because she has to be able to see this incredible situation. She has to be able to see what exactly she has created. I think she should be fired. I would have gone ahead and gotten rid of her. I don't know what she's doing at this point. I would have fired her over the Donald Trump comments because that's the precedent they set with Kurt Schilling. Remember though, I never favored the firing of Kurt Schilling. ESPN should have never gotten in the business as a First Amendment absolutist of making decisions about what are appropriate and inappropriate political opinions. If you don't think that Kurt Schilling should have been fired for his opinion of the North Carolina transgender bathroom bill and I don't or his other conservative beliefs then you also don't think Jamel Hill should be fired for what she said about Donald Trump. But once you set the precedent that Kurt Schilling can be fired then you have gone down the absurd angle, the absurd hole of arguing that there are appropriate and inappropriate private opinions that can and cannot be shared by employees on your network. This to me is much worse than that though because this is a direct attack on ESPN's very business. This is going after the advertisers that support all of their programming as well as the league partner in the NFL that allows everything on ESPN to actually exist. ESPN without the NFL network is basically a dead channel walking. Sorry, without NFL programming, without Monday Night Football tonight, nobody watches it. I just don't understand how it's so dumb. I don't understand how anybody could have an opinion this dumb. Again, as a First Amendment absolutist, I totally understand where the company is coming from here. You took a direct attack at the company's success. You went after our advertisers. You have to be suspended for this. This is an unbelievable decision that is unjustifiable by any metric whatsoever. This is to me worse for ESPN than the Donald Trump comments were because this goes directly to the legitimacy of the business. The fact that the Reverend Al Sharpton is now promising a protest is further proof of what I have been telling you guys which is ESPN cannot placate the far left, the alt-left. Let's get that phrase rolling. They can't placate the alt-left. The alt-left is not happy unless there is absolutely no dissenting opinion allowed against them. And so that is the truth. That is the absurd situation that ESPN finds itself in now. Can you imagine if Al Sharpton they start to picket ESPN headquarters over this decision? The alt-left is going to do this. It's, it's an unbelievable situation and again there are only two options to me of how this happens. One, Jamel Hill is an idiot. Two, she's trying to get fired so she can leave the disaster that is the ESPN 6 o'clock sports center and go get a job somewhere else. I just don't understand how any other decision can be made. You have to understand right after you provoked an entire network to lose its mind over the Donald Trump situation you have to understand what's going on on Twitter. And I just don't understand it at all unless like you say she wants to work at a non-sports network and this is the way she sees to make it happen. Okay, questions. What questions do you guys have? Uh, love you guys. My name is Clay Travis. This is Outkick the Show presented by Odd Shark and the Home Loan Expert. I'd encourage you to check them out both. Um, I, I just, I'm in disbelief. It's literally one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life in all of the show. Alright, I'm doing the show late tonight. I've been running around all day. Birmingham, it was fantastic. Yes, I think ESPN scared to fire her. I think it's possible that ESPN has a full-blown racial uh, unrest that's currently going on on campus. Although, uh, if you actually look at what Jamel Hill said, I don't know how anybody who works at a business and understands how that business works could actually be upset about it at all. I, I, don't, I don't understand how anybody could be upset about this because it's, it's indefensible to go after every single person watching this right now. If you at your business went after two of the most lucrative parts of that business and for ESPN it's advertising and the NFL if you suggested that they boycott your fans boycott both of those it's literally like you're cutting the legs out from underneath your own business. I don't know if she, again if she didn't understand that when you say to boycott the very advertisers that sponsor your show what in the world is she thinking? This is what happens when you get so far down 
the uh, avenue of righteousness in social media. Maybe you just lose all cognitive function and don't realize, wait a minute, these advertisers that I'm saying to boycott, they actually support my show and allow it to exist and actually support my network and allow it to exist too. And moreover, the NFL, which we have every Monday night, is a big part of ESPN's success and their future. I just, I, I just don't even understand it. I frankly don't even remotely understand how this is a controversial position or how this many people could be this stupid about their job. Again, if you are crying, reports are that she was crying to John Skipper, the president of ESPN, and Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, who got involved in the decision not to give her any punishment at all when she came out and said that Donald Trump was a white supremacist, all the people that surround him were white supremacists, the only reason he was elected president is because he's a white guy, and that Donald Trump is supported by only racists. When you said that and didn't get a punishment, maybe she thought she was bulletproof and she could say whatever she wanted. That's the only thing other than just pure stupidity that I can think of for how you tweet something this dumb. Again, I saw it this morning. I tweeted it out at 9 a.m. on my way to Birmingham. Great time down in Birmingham. Appreciate everybody, five, 600 of you, whatever it was, who came out for our talk in Birmingham. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, all right, any other additional questions? My name is Clay Travis. This is Outkick the Show. I'd encourage you to share this with uh, your friends. Uh, Outkick the Show presented by Odd Shark and the Home Loan Expert. I would also tell you uh, I will be discussing this quite a bit tomorrow on Outkick the Coverage, my morning radio show on Fox Sports Radio, 250 plus AM FM stations nationwide, all 50 states, Sirius XM Channel 83. Go download the podcast as well. What will Bob Iger say about this? I don't know. I guess he said something because my guess is he had to sign off on the suspension. Um, I love all of you. Lots to talk about. We'll have the anonymous mailbag tomorrow. I look forward to all of you. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. Whatever you do, word of advice from me, don't be dumb enough to criticize two of the biggest parts of your company's success. If you're at ESPN, don't go after advertisers and don't go after the NFL. You shouldn't even have to say that, but evidently you do because there are people making absolutely unbelievably stupid decisions at ESPN. My name is Clay Travis. Don't be a pussy. Hashtag DBAP. This has been Outkick, the show.